Hi everybody, Ben Baruch here with DIYAutotune.com and AmpiFI, and today we're going to talk about how the MS3 Pro Ultimate's peak and hold injector driver works. Uh, now this lesson will specifically use our MS3 Pro Ultimate, however, uh, the information should pertain to any other aftermarket performance computer, uh, to other factory computers that use peak and hold injector drivers, or to standalone driver boxes. We'll be using a 120 pound standard aftermarket port fuel injector and we'll be measuring a couple of data points using an oscilloscope. I know oscilloscope is often considered to be kind of a scary or, or dirty word. Uh, don't be too afraid here. We'll break it down. An oscilloscope is actually a very simple device at the end of it. It's very much like a, a multimeter. Uh, the difference is a multimeter may give you a, a, an instantaneous or maybe slightly averaged reading. Our oscilloscope gives us uh, a reading over time and it shows us how it changes over time. And we'll be looking at two different data points here. The, the first is this pink trace and the second is this blue trace. Now the pink trace here is measuring voltage at our fuel injector. And currently uh, our injector is not being commanded to, to operate and we are reading 14.0 volts and that's where my power supply is set to right now. I'm using 14 volts here on my, my benchtop power supply because that's what a typical automotive charging system will, will produce when the engine is running. The blue trace down here, this is current. This will be current synced by the injector when the injector is operating. This current will be uh, con monitored and controlled by our MS3 Pro and, and we'll take a look at that in just a minute. But right now the injector is uh, not operating, it's not being commanded to open, and we are sitting at zero amps. So let's make something happen. I'm going to use my output test mode to command five millisecond long pulse widths here. So we'll, we'll get some injection events going. Our scope will take a second and lock in. There we go. So you can see there's a lot going on, but uh, don't freak out, don't worry, let's talk it through. Here is our 14 volts until the ECU's peak and hold driver actually completes the ground connection to the injector right here. And that happens for a five millisecond duration and ends right here. More specifically, we have two phases. We have a peak phase and we have a hold phase. And in here the injector is closed and over here the injector is closed. Let's look at the peak phase. On the MS3 Pro Ultimate this peak phase lasts for approximately 1.9 milliseconds. And as you can see our ground here is completed and when that happens our multimeter begin, or I'm sorry our oscilloscope begins reading uh, zero volts but you can see the current here is climbing and the current will climb to a peak of just over four amps which is where we we control it to on this ECU we have just over four amps of current for the duration of this peak phase 1.9 milliseconds into the peak phase we begin to initiate our hold phase and you can see down here this blue swiggle and I can remove the paint to make it a little easier to see here's our hold phase and the MS3 Pro Ultimate is actively monitoring the current and it's regulating it down to about 1.1 amps for the duration of our injector open event. So this is a 5 millisecond of event, 1.9 milliseconds approximately is a peak phase, and 3.1 milliseconds approximately is our hold phase. How does it hold? Well, it's reading the current uh, constantly and continuously in real time, and when the current peaks up, as you can see right here is a little peak, the injector driver, that ground, is momentarily released until the current falls, and when the current falls below a threshold, the ground is applied again. And you can see that if I turn the voltage trace back on. That's what this is. This is the injector driver very, very, very quickly uh, turning on and turning off that ground connection to the injector. Now, I've had a couple of people ask me, well, isn't the injector closing uh, during those events. No, it, it's absolutely not closing. You see the injector is an electromechanical device. It has uh, built-in latencies. Um, and there's a few reasons why. One is a principle called impedance. This is the resistance to a change in current uh, or change into the direction of the flow of current. 
And what you can see here is this is my injector charging up when I'm telling it to open. But approximately right here is where the pencil on the injector actually moves and the injector opens. And uh, many of you have probably heard of a phenomenon called injector dead time. The dead time of this injector is about uh, three quarters or so of a millisecond. So the first three quarters of a millisecond, the injector actually isn't open. If you have a commanded pulse width to the injector that's three quarters of a millisecond or lower, the injector will not deliver any fuel. And there's a range in here where it may deliver kind of inconsistent fuel. But uh, what we're trying to do with this 1.9 millisecond peak is get that pencil open as quickly as possible and try to be consi as cons consistent as possible with our fuel delivery events. But the, uh, the injector is being regulated here, the current's being regulated here. And at the end of the event, when we remove the ground, which is shown here, the magnetic field that's inside the injector has to dissipate, that energy has to go somewhere, and it creates what's called a, a flyback event. And on this ECU, our flyback is capped at about 30 volts. We have an active flyback, uh, and you can see right here, this active flyback cap is holding us back to about 30 volts. Without that active clamp, uh, the flyback would be much, much higher, uh, and that voltage could, could potentially be high enough to actually cause damage to electronics in the, in the vehicle. So we have it capped out. And uh, the injector doesn't close till somewhere in this region here. Um, and this is where the pintle actually is released by the magnet and the spring inside the injector forces that pintle shut. And then down here, the injector is actually closed again. And what I can do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit, just changing our time base. I'm going to show you multiple injection events. So as you can see here, this is our injector. It's closed. We have our peak event. It's uh, 1.9 milliseconds long. We have our, our hold current event, about 3.1 milliseconds long. We have our short flyback event, and the injector is closed again, and the cycle repeats over and over and over. One other thing while I have you is I'm going to increase the pulse width of my injection event. So I'm no longer commanding 5 milliseconds. I'm commanding 15 milliseconds, just so you can see what happens as I increase the duty cycle. We have our injectors closed. We have our same 1.9 millisecond long uh, peak event, but now we have a substantially longer hold event. So it's a 15 millisecond long total duration. So we have about 13.1 milliseconds of hold, and then we have our flyback event, and the injector is closed again. I hope you found this somewhat entertaining, uh, hopefully maybe even a little bit more educational. If you have any questions, my name is Ben. Please reach out to me. I can be, I can be emailed at support at ampefi.com. See you next time.